as a mother and an entrepreneur, you know, you're facing, and especially knowing that, you know, in this world of social media, it is a struggle. How do you manage being a mother, being an entrepreneur, and dealing with the struggles of social media and how to manage it all and being strategic at the same time? Yes. So I think that, you know, there there comes a point in your entrepreneur journey where you have to, just as much as you let go of your children and send them off to school, you're going to let go of some of those social media tasks that you have to do on a daily basis and, and budget that out and let it go to an assistant or an intern or, you know, with someone, it could even be someone in your family, you know, you have a niece coming up or a nephew that's interested in this work. And so it, it's also a way for you to teach someone else a, a skill. Rita V helps women entrepreneurs, small businesses, and marginalized communities reach their target audience and social media goals. Through guidance and support, her clients learn how to leverage their brand story and stay on trend within their industry. Now it's time to find out more about Rita V with the host of the Entrepreneurial Vibration Show, Sandy V. Terry. Thank you so much, Rita V. She is a social media strategist and she's joining our podcast. And we are here today to talk to her about her expertise. I met her earlier this year at Social Media Week and she absolutely blew my mind. She was talking about Facebook groups and I learned so much in about a 90 minute period where she was just talking about how to form the groups, how to manage the groups, and so much more information that I just had to actually um, talk to her again and have her on our podcast. So welcome and thank you for uh, joining us. Um, so Rita, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey? So I am a social media strategist consultant for women entrepreneurs and small business owners, and I help them overcome the overwhelm of implementing a social media strategy. I am also a mother to a 10 year old budding little boy. <laughs> and you know he obviously takes up some of my time and I'm very passionate about uh, women you know and mompreneurs specifically so very I wanted good. to talk a little bit about that <laughs> excellent now you talked about a key or instrumental word which is the overwhelm of this social media world, right? Or managing all this. Um, so why don't you tell us what exactly does that mean? So by the overwhelm, I find that, you know, many women and small business owners, whether you're a woman or a man, uh, tend to become extremely overwhelmed with where to focus their time when it comes to social media marketing. And a lot of times they're overwhelmed because you're getting the experts telling you, hey, you got to be on Twitter, you have to be on LinkedIn, you should be on Facebook groups, you need to be on Instagram. It's just there's so much information out there. And what I do is that I come along and I create a measurable strategy based on what your goals are for your business. And mm -hmm. I am a firm believer in that we don't have to be everywhere. You know, we don't have to be on all of the networks out there because then you're just going to become overwhelmed. So, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So how do you come about, you know, this strategy in making those strategic decisions as to where is the appropriate place for in a specific person to be or a company to be? So I like to always start with um, where they have built an audience uh, thus far, right? And, and how far along they've come with that audience. And even if the audience as small as just 100 people, maybe you just have 80 people, um, I get a lot of women who have their own coaching programs that they run or women who are professionals. And so some of them go to LinkedIn. Some of them decide that they want to utilize their Instagram. And so I always like to start my strategies based on where you have an audience currently and then expanding out from there. Mm -hmm. So really, really focusing on that 
small audience that you have and building that out. I see. Now, the majority of your existing customers are mompreneurs, correct? Well, I would say some of them are. Um, a lot of them are empty nesters. Okay. So that's also interesting um, to see because they're empty nesters, but they have a nine to five and they're professionals, uh, you know, in their career. But then they also have a business on the side that they're running that they're also very passionate about. Mm -hmm. But you're a mompreneur yourself. So what would you say are some of the challenges since you are experiencing that yourself, that as a mother and an entrepreneur, you know, you're facing and especially knowing that, you know, in this world of social media, it is a struggle. How do you manage being a mother, being an entrepreneur in dealing with the struggles of social media and how to manage it all and being strategic at the same time? Yes. So I think that, you know, there, there comes a point in your entrepreneur journey where you have to, just as much as you let go of your children and send them off to school, you're going to let go of some of those social media tasks that you have to do on a daily basis and, and budget that out and let it go to an assistant or an intern or, you know, with someone, it could even be someone in your family, you know, you have a niece coming up right. or a nephew that's interested in this work. And so it, it's also a way for you to teach someone else uh, a skill. And right. so I think being able to say to yourself, okay, I'm going to hire out. And if you can't hire out to say, you know, something that we were talking about offline, which is batching, you know, batching yeah. the work. And that's what you can see behind me. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. No, and absolutely. I think you just actually hit the nail on the head. In, in, in for the listeners, um, and, and you and I are very aware of this, but um, a lot of people have a difficult time letting go of certain responsibilities. Uh, but oftentimes, you need to know that you're actually hurting yourself more as an entrepreneur when you are not letting go of those responsibilities. Uh, once you learn how to let go of those responsibilities, you're actually elevating yourself a little bit more and you're allowing yourself to grow within your own role. So one of the things that you were just saying is like, you know, outsourcing, um, you know, finding the right resources, the right people with the right skills in allowing yourself to do the things that you have, you know, that zone of genius. So yeah. if you can find those right resources, you know, finding a VA or, or a virtual assistant for those people that don't know what a VA yeah. is. Um, but, but right on, I mean, you hit the nail on the head right there. Yeah. And I think it's also important to look at it, you know, on a, even on a smaller scale. I find that, you know, especially, you know, speaking on social media, it's just, it could be something as small as hiring someone to just create graphics for you. You know, you have the copy and you're just giving right. them the copy and you're saying, right. hey, go and create um, some images for me. Or can really? you edit these images for me? You know, editing takes a lot of time when it comes to social and, you know, even having um, micro video content takes time to edit. So, right, right. Looking at it on those smaller scales. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Um, so why don't we talk also a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey? So how do you get here where you are today? So um, people get a little shocked when I say this, but um, I, I tell people I know how it feels to open up a business just as much as they do, not just because I'm an entrepreneur, but because I started off with a restaurant. Um, my husband <laughs> decided to open up a restaurant a couple of years back and um, I was I also have a background in accounting and so what happened was that when we opened up the restaurant I quickly realized that we needed to not only market our business online and we're talking about when Instagram was just new and everyone was still posting pictures of their food and how pretty their food was or not so pretty because there were a lot of ugly pictures <laughs> 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 and 
and and there were you know all of those um graphics with like multiple images in them and so when i when we had the restaurant i came across a lot of marketers and website developers and i'm gonna shout yell out yelp out right now because um my friends and i like to say out here in new york yelp is like the mafia they <laughs> hold your business hostage <laughs> and so i learned that you know there's there's a lot of people who will try to convince you that you need certain things that you don't necessarily need when you're starting off yeah and so from there um you know i was able to market the restaurant and and get a lot of traffic on facebook at the time and um instagram not so much again it was still fairly new but mm -hmm. we utilized facebook a lot and my friends um, who were opening businesses at the time um, obviously saw what I was doing. They wanted to learn more about it. And so it just spread from there and it really became just word of mouth there. So, so when exactly did you decide to just have your own business to do your own consulting? So in 2015, after mm -hmm. I was working with a digital agency, um, I went off and it was, I wanted to work with other agencies, but I found that, you know, it was really competitive and I enjoyed more uh, working one on one uh, with clients and, and really being able to be, you know, as they say, my own boss. <laughs> At the time, my son was fairly awesome. young. <laughs> yeah. right. My son was fairly young, so it was just like it worked for me, you know, and, and again, you know, going back to being a mompreneur, it was like, what is going to work with my schedule? and where am I not gonna feel guilty and like I'm dropping the ball out of nine to five? Now we would love to hear from you. Tell us on the comments below. Was this advice helpful to you today? And how can you put some of what you learn into practice right away to start to see a difference in your entrepreneurial journey? Also, don't forget, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so we know to make more podcasts like this one.